Well, I did play some too, but then I played sit a lot. Oh, okay. I will try and find it. Oh, shoot. I just, I just wanted to talk about the email I was thinking about. I wasn't even present for. Okay. Yeah. I get to do that. Cool. <laughs> there we go. We're back. We can hear you. We're back. We may may be able to find the mic somehow. Okay. Hey. 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 Excuse of the book. <laughs> it is the oldest Oxford excuse. Somebody would plan around. <laughs> Somebody should train. plan around that. That's right. Freaking train. Someone should like really try to like dollar it. Like just call that back. I know. Like what if they like just like really try to like say like they really like it here. Oh my god. <laughs> Seriously, like a week later, we just handed like a white dog like at a train. call tonight's planning commission to order uh, seven o'clock and uh, with that I will accept a motion to approve the agenda I so move to second all right I will let uh, any pick how we do the first or the motion and the second uh, all those in favor Aye. 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 any opposition all right uh, next approval of the April 9th 2024 minutes do I have any additions, changes, corrections to the minutes or a motion to accept? I move to accept the that's, minutes. That's why I'm starting with the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Dr. Prithrich with the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Seeing none. At this time, we'll entertain uh, comments from the public not, rela or not related to agenda items. So if you would like to address the commission about an issue that is not on tonight's agenda, feel free to step forward to the podium. Seeing people curious but not moving, we will move on. Uh, reports from commissions, boards, committees, and staff. Oh, Mr. Arbuckle, let's start on your side. So, Parkview Transportation, did we, this, this one, so there's nothing for me to report. Easy, Dr. Prithridge. I guess uh, I will report, I try to sometimes report down from council if there's an up and down. And one of those things, it's obliquely, but maybe very directly related to the Planning Commission, which is if you've been following the news, you may be aware that we have a budgetary situation where our fire and EMS, in order to staff it properly to provide the protection that we need, uh, even at existing staffing levels, we're running a deficit. To run it properly, we're gonna run an even bigger deficit. What this just means, however, is that um, we have to re reach a decision point about this. Um, fortunately, um, the, the, the deficits are about $2.2 million a year projected out over the next 10 years. In a first, Miami University has voluntarily agreed to do a, a payment in lieu of taxes mm -hmm. to help support fire and EMS, which I, I believe is, I have not heard of this elsewhere in Ohio. So it's really remarkable. What that means, however, is on the November ballot will be a levy issue to see whether the citizens of Oxford are willing to step up to fund their fire and EMS commensurate with Miami support. Um, I bring this up today, A, because I think it concerns all of us, but if you think about what, I could ask Mr. Perry what the, the budget of the Community Development Department is. If not properly funded, if a levy doesn't pass, Miami's contribution is contingent upon the passage of a levy. And so if we need to find $2 million in the budget, that's a big number. And you have to look at all of the departments and things that you support in the city of Oxford, parks and recreation, community development, anything else, because that's a big number. Um, and if we have to find it elsewhere in the general fund, it will mean a lot of pain in things that we value. So 
I just bring that up because if you, for example, care about proper staffing in the community development department, then you care about fire and EMS. If you care about your parks, you care about fire and EMS, and you'll get a chance to show how much you care in November. So I'll stop with that. I don't think there was anything else to report. And for the record, the commission neither endorses or uh, is against any levies. Yes. Nothing for me tonight. Easy. Oh, actually, Vice Chair Rosenberg. Hey, so I'm going to actually report on a meeting that I didn't attend. So um, I unfortunately was unable to attend the last Housing Advisory Commission. Um, and then they, in fact, although they did not reach quorum, they had a really great discussion about housing kind of like priorities and um, goals that we would like to see happen as a commission, which I agree with. So um, we really think that the top four things that Housing Advisory Commission would like to see um, is that there is an RFP for the development of 47 acres out on um, Riley. Thank you. I love working 10 hours a day. Okay. So we also would like to explore ways to prevent corporate home purchases. Um, and, you know, we have volunteered to like kind of research and define that. Um, we want to see more inclusionary zoning, density bonuses, set-asides, fee waivers, expedited approval, and no parking minimums or mi minimal parking. So um, that's something I've talked about for a while. And um, then developing eviction diversion programs, which is already starting to happen pretty well, but just figuring out ways that housing can help with that. So I just wanted to report on that conversation, even though I wasn't there, because I do think that in, you know, as a planning commission, we should really take into account the things that I report from Housing Advisory Commission, because we really, you know, are here to figure out, um, you know, to help figure, help figure out um, how to solve these problems that we have with housing. Um, so with some other members of um, uh, planning, there was a meeting held on April 18th of the environment or the climate committee. And um, just a few things. We talked about our goals for this year in 2025. Um, and one of the things that we kind of added was that we would be thinking about the code revisions and how the code revisions can reflect our environmental goals, if, you know, if possible. And um, there had been um, some discussion about merging the two environmental committees and a decision was made not to do that. So we will continue to have two. The Environmental Action Committee and the Climate Committee will still be separate entities. to report. Chrissy. Uh, three people getting off the hook really soon. Uh, last week we had historic and architectural preservation. Um, the meeting went pretty quick for how robust the discussion and the agenda were. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the uh, largest storage building in our town uh, at the corner of Poplar and High Street, um, there was a, a pre-application certificate of appropriateness for a redevelopment Oh gosh, hardware store, Dairy Queen, uh, co-op bookstore, uh, six buildings once merged into one, or five buildings, sorry. Um, so that was encouraging. Um, the architect, uh, the representative from the group uh, redeveloping it is uh, very much on, on top of things, very on the spot, very receptive to uh, staff and um, uh, kind of the goals of, of um, HAPC planning see that parcel <laughs> um, and then another one and um, I always give a nod to Edna Southard for years ago nudging that historic and architectural preservation that it's more uh, than just buildings uh, we had a proposal from a local artist um, there is no street because name because it's an alley uh, but the alley next to um, oh gosh it's uh, actually right across from like apple tree uh, there's a proposal and we gave uh, approval with definite 
staff involvement and direction uh, for a nod to the city's history uh, related to modern beekeeping. So uh, we thought even though it may <laughs> throw some people for a loop, because it is definitely not red brick old school, it is uh, an incredible nod to our town. Uh, the, the artist has done a lot of work in the town, very innovative, um, just great conversation, very receptive. So um, we're looking forward to that uh, coming about. Mm -hmm. come up front but we have a new intern uh, he's sitting in the back there logan murray if you could raise your hand uh, he's a public administration uh, major upcoming junior at miami in the fall maybe working with us this, this summer um, and then um, i also wanted to just as an update to everyone of uh, our request for proposals um, for the code uh, revision that's been referenced several times um, we're in the process of scoring that now and that's going well. <clears throat> we had good response, so we'll keep you updated on that. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bork? Yes, good evening, um, Planning Commission members. Um, just wanted to report on the National Planning Conference, which I had the privilege of attending on behalf of the City of Oxford, April 13th through the 16th. Um, just wanted to share some key takeaways uh, that I took away from the sessions that I attended. It's no surprise that there's a nationwide housing crisis, and so that was very much top of mind for a lot of folks um, in trying to figure out ways to deal with that. Um, it seems that the planning profession can definitely do a lot to help on the supply side of the equation. So helping to increase housing supply would then in turn hopefully bring down prices. Um, so there's been a number of uh, various strategies and tools that have been employed. Uh, Chief among them probably would be zoning reform. So there was a, a heavily attended session on Minneapolis 2040. They did a comp plan and then followed up with a number of really um, interesting uh, zoning reforms. They've essentially eliminated single family exclusive zoning and also eliminated parking minimums in a lot of areas. Um, another uh, interesting takeaway, so apparently the state of California now requires objective design standards, and that's a way to ensure greater predictability for builders and developers to encourage them to build more housing. Um, so, uh, and, and just to go back on Minneapolis too, um, the mayor actually talked a couple times and he mentioned that uh, because Minneapolis has embraced building more housing units, and when you're in the city, you can really tell that there's been a mission to densify the city. Um, that uh, by doing so, that has actually kept rents down in comparison nationwide to c cities of similar size. So um, yeah, there's a number of reforms that are being embraced, uh, trying to embrace missing middle housing in particular, uh, streamlining processes, again, kind of allowing for greater predictability uh, and allowing for things to get built. So a lot of really good juicy stuff that I got to take away from the conference. So uh, again, it was a privilege to attend. And that's all I have to share. Thank you. Anything from the legal department? No, no, maybe <laughs> later. <laughs> we'll try to keep you, you know, engaged and busy. Um, all right, with that, we'll move on to new business. So PC 2024-01, 5728 College Corner Pike. This is a conditional use uh, proposal for a new tractor supply. MSP Properties of Ohio LLP is the applicant. And this was uh, tabled from um, April. So hindsight, uh, on the agenda, technically, this should have been old business that we untabled. Um, but in the greater scheme of things, it will still come off the table if somebody would be so kind as to make a motion to untable it. I, s I move that we take PC 2024-01 off of the table. Dr. Prithrich with the motion. Second. Mr. Bracken with the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and just to keep you on your toes, I will entertain a motion to adjourn to public session. I make a motion that we adjourn to public session for PC 2024-01. Second. I will go with that combination again. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, with that, Mr. Moore, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman Watt. So uh, this is a conditional use for a new tractor supply store at 5728 College Corner Pike, and this was indeed 
table from the April 9th meeting. And to go through some basic details, the applicant is MSP Properties of Ohio LP under care of Mitchell Pappen. The property owner is uh, 5278, whoops, I think I uh, got the address wrong on that one, <laughs> 5278 College Corner Pike LLC, care of Timothy Macy. The engineer is with us tonight, Widmer Engineering Inc. The current zoning of the property is GB General Business District. The overall property that we're dealing with is presently 13.67 acres in size. Of that, 4.21 acres is under consideration. That's essentially the amount of area that is needed in order to develop the new tractor supply company store. And the proposal would be for the conditional use. The reason the conditional use is needed is because the retail store exceeds 15,000 square feet in gross floor area. So that's the reason it's going through the discretionary review process. And in working with the engineering team on this project, it's clear that we're going to need a future preliminary plat in order to set the stage for this eventual development of the store to subdivide off that 4.2 acres. And then I believe the intent from there will be to basically replat as future development may come down the pike on the remainder portion of the GB zone site. Here is a look at the site location. So the property boundary is shown as a dark black line. This is in proximity to John Deere Koenig equipment, which is to the north and west. You have Gilman's Hardware to the west. There's the First Baptist Church of Oxford, which is there at the corner of Ringwood Road and College Corner Pike. And then, of course, Walmart is to the south and to the east. Here's a look at the current zoning jurisdiction. So the city corporate boundary is shown in yellow. So the site is indeed within the city limits, so no annexation is going to be necessary in this scenario. Uh, there is township zoning, agricultural A1 zoning that is to the east as well as an M2 zoning. I believe that's a business zoning designation um, off, further off to the west, but not adjoining to the site. And then uh, going, returning down to the, I might actually grab my laser pointer for this. Looking to the west and to the south. So here is the First Baptist Church. Here is the May Day gun range, which is now closed. So you may have, recalled the planned development proposals that were sought for that particular property. Um, that is zoned LI, light industrial zoning. So that's a different zoning district than the GB. GB is more commercial oriented in nature. LI is more industrial, light industrial in nature. And here's a look at the comprehensive plan. It was adopted in January of 2023. So the site is within the flex industrial character area. So that is spanning, of course, the two different zoning designations that are kind of interweaving together in this particular peripheral area of the city, right on the boundary of the city. Um, but the description for the flex industrial from our comp plan, this is an area that's characterized by employment uses, light industrial distribution, logistics, and includes ability for flexible uses, adaptive reuse, um, and this is specifically stated, this would be an area found on the outskirts of the community where sensitivity to preserving existing character is less relevant. So there really isn't a very dominant sort of urban character or flavor to this area. Um, it's more flexible, it's more uh, industrial in nature. So something to keep in mind. Here is a bird's eye view looking north. There really isn't a lot of tree cover on the site. Uh, it's mostly scrub. I think the largest tree I found was down here in this little corner pocket close to where Todd Road has this strange intersection with co uh, College Corner Pike. So definitely not uh, 90 degrees, definitely less than 90 degrees at that particular location. Um, so probably the most significant pocket, if you want to even call it that, would be up closer to Koenig Equipment on Ringwood Road. West, and this is essentially just prairie, just grassland, so it's not used agriculturally. And here are some 
photos. This is from the Walmart driveway. There's a secondary driveway that comes from Walmart to Todd Road, that location. And here is the, the only way to basically gain access to the site at present, just this very small pad area. And this is probably, again, this is the largest tree that was noticeable during the site visit. And then this is a view looking from the north up closer to Koenig. There is a noticeable slope downward. This picture probably shows it best. So this is US 27 here. So you can see how the land slopes down into the site next to the annexation tree. So returning to the site aerial, and this is fairly recent imagery. This is from last year. I believe this is from December. And I've excuse me, superimposed the Oxford Thoroughfare Plan recommended routes for a major collector and minor collector on top of this aerial. So a couple different things to mention here. So um, we'll start with this. So the orange line here is identified on the map as Alternative 5B. So this would be a roadway that would connect Brown Road to US 27. So creating a collector roadway across kind of the northern fringe of the city. And that route spans through land that's presently unincorporated, that's not in the city. But it does appear on the city plan, and you can plan for that as a city. Um, and what is described for that <coughs> is to abandon the intersection of Todd Road with 27. And my guess is that that was the original recommendation. That's what appears in the text of the plan. But then as you can see on the map, there are two alternatives. One that would connect to this blue line here, which is identified as 15B. Okay, I just noticed that for whatever reason, the numbers are not popping. So they should be in white, but yeah, you can see 5B here, 15B, 15C. So my interpretation of this is we're at a bit of a crossroads where we need to decide which route to take, whether it's going to be the 5B route that connects to 15B or the 5B route that connects to 15C. And really the difference between both of these lines connect down to Contreras Road. So it's essentially the recommendation to have a ring road around the city per the 2007 thoroughfare plan. And the difference between C and D is that C utilizes an existing rail crossing on Ringwood Road. And the idea is to improve Ringwood Road and make it part of that ring road around the city. Uh, 15B in contrast, and you may have recalled that recommendation when we reviewed the May Day business park plan. We wanted to make sure that when they were developing that site that they would steer clear of that zone where that future roadway could happen in the future. So with these various thoroughfare plan considerations, uh, ultimately the direction that staff offered was let's select the southern route. That way it connects with the possibility for a future road that could connect into the May Day site to develop under the light industrial zoning or whatever zoning it might become under the zoning modernization RFP. Um, so essentially picking that route over the northern route. So this now shows you the proposed subdivision. So this takes the overall site and splits it into two. So this is that 4.2 acres that would be occupied by the tractor supply. And this white area, so switching back and forth, this is current, this is proposed. So the applicant has agreed as part of a future subdivision to dedicate this additional right of way to accommodate a realigned intersection. So that way, should the city decide to pursue it later with grant funding or whatever means may be available, 
funding wise to begin to construct this ring road in accordance with your plan. So returning to a site aerial, again, this is the current site boundary. Just wanted to touch very briefly on a prior plan development that was approved through the city. This is from 2017. So this was the preliminary plan development. And at the time, we were thinking of doing a storage facility adjacent to Koenig, and then this area here was reserved as a phase two. Somewhat undetermined at that stage, they decided to show some very conceptual buildings, put in some parking, parking areas. Um, but this was intended to be a future development area, and this would come first. This was phase one, the storage facility. So they did go through the preliminary and final procedures for that. They obtained their approval of but ultimately it never came to fruition. And this was the arrangement of access through the site. So you can see that actually the previous proposal embraced more of that northern route when it came to the thoroughfare plan because the road went through the site like this and then had another connecting road down to the Walmart driveway toward intersection. <coughs> so now we're going to zoom in. So this is the proposed division with the right-of-way dedication. And there would be some additional strips of right-of-way that would have to be dedicated along Todd and College Corner as needed to conform to the thoroughfare plan. Here's a look at the topography. So when the lines are close together, that indicates a really steep slope. So this, again, along College Corner, this is where that land kind of slopes down into the site. And the general direction of the drainage goes this direction, kind of toward Walmart. And this is the proposed site plan for tractor supplies. So uh, the engineers clearly taking advantage of the direction of the flow and shape, or uh, excuse me, the, uh, the slope of the site going down to a rain garden in the southern portion of the site. And here's a stylized view so you can kind of get a sense for division among developed features, hard surfaces versus green space. So the building footprint of the store would be here. There is a canopy over top the live goods center, which is within this fenced enclosure. So this is where merchandise would be stored outdoors for tractor supply. Um, and then of course the parking, there is some front yard parking as well as parking on the side and uh, a number of trees that are being planted. And they are demonstrating compliance with the required number of plantings per our tree ordinance, which is good. Uh, the private access easement, so there is a road that's proposed along the northern edge of the site. And the intent is for that to be private only. So it would not become a public street, but there would be an easement that would be that would become a part of the plat, and we would certainly mandate it as part of a future plat, that the easement go on there, and that would allow for shared access between this site and whatever future development may come in store for the remaining portion of the property. And then all the areas identified in orange, I think the applicant did a great job of explaining exactly where the outdoor storage would take place on the site and where it wouldn't. So I've essentially just copied the details that they provided to show all the areas where merchandise would be displayed and allowed to be displayed. So there wouldn't be anything that would be allowed to be um, sitting on the parking spaces in front or to the side, for instance. And if you've been to Gilman's or Koenig, you understand what I mean by merchandise, equipment, um, you know, mulch and, and whatever whatever they're selling, right? <laughs> A number of different things that they sell. Uh, do want to highlight the tree survey exemption areas. So the tree, uh, the tree ordinance exempts anything within 15 feet of the building footprint and anything within five feet of any other developed surface from needing surveying. So those areas appear in blue here. And you can see how that basically blocks out the entire site. Um, bearing some leftover strips. And you can also see that those leftover strips have trees that are slated to be planted in those locations. 
So we really don't feel that the additional expense of the tree survey is necessary in this particular instance. And we're recommending that that be waived. And you may recall from a couple prior proposals, the Holiday Inn Express and the Waffle House in particular, that we wanted to see more of a direct pedestrian and bicycle connection because presently there is a multi-use path that's proposed to be built along College Square Pike, which the applicants agreed to, and we're thankful for that, appreciative of that. Um, but the walkway connection is way far to the north, and that's a that's a, a big ask for anybody that's walking on foot to essentially pass the business that they're trying to reach and then circle back. So we feel that having a second connection to the building, um, possibly through this route here would be beneficial. So going to the recommendation, I'll just touch on each of the recommended conditions. So condition number one, what this does in terms of our timing provisions within the code, it moves forward or shifts forward the timing with respect to the preliminary plat and final subdivision plat. It would um, move the conditional use forward because with the conditional use, you're required to get a permit within one year and be operational within two. Well, the platting process can take some time, several months. So to allow ample time to go through that process and then at the conclusion of that process, once that approval is granted, then in theory, everything should be able to not be knocked out at that point. So we feel it's reasonable to just simply shift forward the timing provisions related to the conditional use. Uh, number two, let's see. That actually might be what I just described. <laughs> <laughs> so number one just simply states that a preliminary plat and a final subdivision of the plat are necessary components. Number two outlines everything I just mentioned. Number three is to have the additional access way, like I just showed on the last slide with the red arrow. Number four, so the code does require a public sidewalk to be provided along any adjacent public thoroughfare adjacent to a development site. So that would require public sidewalk along Todd Road where there presently is no sidewalk. But we do understand that there's the potential for Todd Road to eventually be improved and become the start of a ring road around the city. And so for that reason, we would be open to accepting payment in lieu of making the improvement at the present time. So it can be more appropriately, uh, it can more appropriately contribute to a future, more substantial capital improvement project in that area. Number five, just ensures that the building architecture and signage follows the submitted drawings. Um, there are some architectural standards inherent to the GB general business district that I didn't get into, um, but staff is feels that the facade embraces those standards adequately. Number six, so the city engineer has asked for a traffic study, so naturally that could become a component of the future subdivision review. And there may be additional improvements that that would necessitate when we're talking about the overall site versus the 4.2 acres. Number seven is the stormwater management systems. We do have a design manual that the service department and city engineer enforces. Um, there was a comment about some poor drainage, particularly along the side of Todd Road. So that would need to be addressed to the city engineer's satisfaction. Um, the fire chief requested some fire hydrants. So number eight is there for Chief Deathridge. Number nine ensures that the outdoor display, that it's clear where it's allowed and where it's not allowed for the submitted site plan. Number 10, so I didn't point this out on the slide, I can go back to it if you need me to, but the dumpster enclosure is in the front yard on the Todd Road side. The code says you can't have a dumpster enclosure in the front yard, so I think hopefully it should be fairly easy to find an alternative location within the scope of the present site plan. So that would require relocating the dumpster. And then the two waivers that we're recommending, again, waiver of the tree survey, so that's number 12. And then number 11 is a waiver to the maximum fence height. They're requesting 16 feet as opposed to the maximum, the usual maximum of 12. And they have agreed to do a more aesthetically pleasing 
vinyl coated black chain link fence. Um, and there are some, there's some reasons or rationale that I don't recall exactly, but I know it's stated in the report. You're welcome to inquire of the applicant on that if you wish. And I think that about does it for my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Moore? Can I ask a question about, um, I know that not all the details of the stormwater have been worked out, but it notes a rain garden where traditionally we would have a detention retention basin. Can you talk through what's, to your knowledge, what's planned there? And I really don't have any knowledge of that at the moment because it's more of a placeholder that we haven't gotten to the construction <coughs> level detailed phase. Okay. So that would be a great question to ask the applicant. Okay, thank you. I did have a question <coughs> on um, the outdoor storage. I know inherently we don't allow that, so the um, area where they would have um, yard trailers, things like that, you know, I've, I've, I've seen other locations. Um, I think that, I hate this term, buy right. <coughs> uh, retailers have the right to put out seasonal goods, anything agricultural, things of that nature. Some of these green areas, I'm looking at page 41, seem very large for outdoor display areas. Uh, 20 by 49 and a half, 20 by 65, eight, 20 by 34. And those are some giant display areas. Are there any conditions, or, or could you talk a little more to the, the rules about outdoor storage? Because um, what I think of is, uh, for, for historical context, the Kroger fuel station is allowed to have some outdoor uh, displays and storage simply because of the building design. Um, years ago, we had to talk with uh, another gas station about eight-foot mulch pallets mm -hmm. obstructing traffic. So I know that the traffic issue and some of that won't be there, but having run a big box retail home improvement location myself, I know how the architectural intent and the 10 p.m. closing the storage, you put it there, go. So could you kind of talk to what that area is, what it could be, if there's anything we have to approve or how the city would monitor that? So my view on it, I was actually just looking for a copy of my zoning code, which I guess I forgot to bring with Everybody me Everybody carries one, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> There's actually multiple sections across our code that are somewhat inconsistent with one another, so it's not a very easy question to, to or not, it's not a very easy answer to your question in terms of what does the code allow in terms of outdoor storage? That, that's a very um, it's a complicated question to answer. I think the simplest way I could answer it is there seems to be code support that says if you have outdoor storage, it needs a conditional use. There is definitely language in the So I suppose the, the more academic question of what does the code allow in, term out, in terms of outdoor storage, because we're in a conditional use right now, I feel like you can consider that as being reasonably associated or accessory to the use of this as a tractor supply store. So I think that can all be negotiated through this process. Well, and, and one thing I want to clarify, this is not, my comment is not intended as a gotcha. My, <laughs> my comment is, there are businesses or locations where they've done what makes sense. And like I said, with the traffic intersection visibility, what they had done for years is now no longer there. So I, I'm thinking of things like, um, you know, by approving the storage area, do they have the inherent right to put propane there, uh, like a, a blue rhino cage, or, or is that something they need staff approval for? Like, I just want to make sure we understand so that we don't unintentionally limit them or conversely permit something that nobody ever uh, thought of. Sure, yeah, and it's, it's a very good question. So um, first off, so you mentioned propane. I do know for a fact their plan shows a propane tank pad yeah. within the, the enclosure area. Um, but just to kind of recite here for a minute what the code says particular to outdoor storage, actually lumps it in with vending machines that <laughs> might be outside of a retail establishment. Um, so yeah, 
that says self-service mechanical dispensers such as soft drink machines, canning machines, meat racks, et cetera. Okay, you get the point there. Freestanding container racks from which customers pick up merchandise to be purchased inside the building such as ice coolers, freezers, propane tanks, mulch. Um, so it kind of gives some examples, but then it specifically excludes motor fuel pumps, and I think that's because gas stations require conditional use, so that's clearly associated with those uses. Um, says that these facilities are permitted in business and industrial districts, which GB is a business district. Such facilities shall not occupy the following unless designated on a site development plan. Private sidewalks, so you can't have it on an area where pedestrians are going to and from. Public right of way within an interior drive or drive aisle, landscape area or required parking area any area that will interfere with sight distance, so there's a clear public safety reason for that. <coughs> Front yard setback or side yard setback adjacent to right of way, except when against the building. So the only thing that's clear from there is front yard setback is off limits, but everywhere else is a go. You okay. can have it. Um, and again, I know there's also language in the code that speaks to outdoor storage being a conditional use. So, and I think it makes a lot of sense to have that type of review for outdoor storage. Um, so again, since we're going through that exact same process now, there's no reason to double up on the process because the retail building exceeds the 15,000. So um, I think both can be considered jointly without issue. Um, but yes, in terms of exactly what is being stored and where, I think that's all up for discussion. Okay. And, and the one other <coughs> question I have, and this is why I noticed the outdoor storage areas. On page 44, there's um, some really good pre um, uh, preliminary uh, site plans. There's fire truck access, delivery vehicle. I thought those were really good. To avoid the display on page 44, to avoid the display, and this says for fire truck access. Um, if you look in the middle of the yellow, the drive aisle inside the fenced area, which has a front and a back entrance, uh, to avoid the display area of 20 by 34 by the dark green, uh, the fire truck would have to cut across at least two parking spaces. So I just, I, I don't know if uh, Chief Dethridge has, has mentioned that or if you guys have talked about that. And the only reason I mentioned that is because, like I said, the display caught my attention. So if they're trying to get around the display, mm -hmm. um, and, and again, this I trust uh, you and Mr. Perry more. If we can move those two spots somewhere else, just thinking ahead. But that's that also caught my attention. So I didn't know. Again, that's not my forte. Uh, Mr. Keebler, if he was here, he could explain it to me. He is not, <laughs> but. Um, is that something we should be concerned about, or is that an easy fix? I think that would be a good question to ask the project engineer. Okay, perfect. And the fire chief did see these exhibits, um, but maybe that wasn't caught in his review. So I think at this time that'd be a good question. I mean, I know the fire truck would win against a Honda, so I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I just, just okay. That's all I. Can I just ask a follow-up question? This is just getting into the nuance of the code, is that you know some of this outdoor, the, the, the retail uses are a conditional use if they involve some of these outdoor things. And then we have specific, 1147, you have like kind of conditional use specific concerns. Mm -hmm. Do we have a portion of the code that specifies what, like if we were, if we were to pay attention to that outdoor mm -hmm. storage, that yes. there are criteria it, that should guide us? Because I'm looking through, there's like building material side yards, but I'm not sure if that's exactly right. Is there a portion of the 11? I actually believe it was included in your packet okay, under maybe the relevant that. zoning standards. I'll find the exact page. Okay, thank you. We need our 100 page, page packet, 18. you missed everything. Okay. Uh, oh, that's for floor area exceeding maximal, maximum allowable square footage. Um, I would have to resort to using the laptop again to pull up those. That's okay. I'm just looking, and I mean, I'm, right now I'm not seeing it in our code in terms of like those. You know, sometimes they have like 
materials some shall not be like in yeah shall not be visible from the public street or something but I'm mm -hmm. not right now seeing that we have conditional use specific concerns specific to this stuff there is one on uh, temporary and or yeah. outdoor sales of plants and garden supplies um, that's a yep. potential concerns this is number 31 yeah. uh, in 114703 the potential concerns are signs sight distance at corner lots okay okay so that's kind of back to um, the front yard setback, mm -hmm. you know, safety aspect, and then B regulations. Storage of goods shall not reduce the usable number of parking spaces by more than 10% of the required total. Of course, this was written before we updated the parking requirements. Yeah. Um, and then number two, goods shall not be stored in a driveway required to access required parking spaces. So it's very minimal. Uh, there's really yeah. not anything more than that. So I could just be guided by the conditional use standard that if there's sure. a secondary concern that might like a secondary impact that would cause a concern that would need to be mitigated right then we can tackle that without necessarily needing that code yep. guidance like to me i'm imagining that it's it might be storage of pieces like things like lawnmowers mm -hmm. you know if i if i were judged by thinking about rural kings that i've been to or you know tractor supplies anyway thank you we can come back to this well i i would say too that the um the one of the primary purposes of purposes of the conditional use is to um really focus on mitigating any nuisances that are caused to yeah. the surrounding property owners. If there's a self-imposed problem, um, that's not as <laughs> big of a concern. Yeah. Um, although, if this property is necessary to access other properties, obviously that is more, that is a more prominent issue. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Moore? And then we're gonna let you off the hook. <laughs> Right, and uh, is it Mr. Pappen? Mr. Pappen is not here. Um, I'm Sandy Long, the director of real estate development for MSP Properties in Ohio. Come on up. <laughs> and just for the record, if you would uh, state your full name and uh, your, your title and affiliation with the organization so that she has a few minutes, that'd be great. Absolutely. My name is Samuel Dudley. I'm the director of real estate development for MSP Properties of Ohio LP. And I'm here with my engineer, Sarah Lee. Uh, Sarah Lee from Elizabeth Whitney Engineering, um, and I'm part of the team. Awesome, thank you. Um, so uh, what we would really appreciate is if there's, uh, and you heard some, some questions that we had, so if there's any uh, presentation or, or walkthrough uh, to supplement, uh, uh, clarify, dispute Mr. Moore's presentation, <laughs> Uh, that would be great, and then uh, what we'll do after uh, you uh, have some time to, to add to our uh, information, we'll most likely have some questions for you. Well, first I'd like to applaud Mr. Moore on that presentation. It was very um, efficient and uh, detailed. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't believe I have much more to add. I think we can go right into questions or issues that you all may have with the current presentation. Perfect. I know he has a question, that's why I call him. Well, you know, and because I'm gonna defer, because I think Mr. Moore, the presentation was thorough and his analysis was thorough. You know, some of the things, are there any qualms or about some of the recommendations in terms of the conditions? The one I'm particularly interested in was the addition of a better sidewalk connection, a more direct sidewalk connection. You know, is, is there any concern there or to help guide us in that? Yeah. Um, To add on to that, all the recommendations mentioned, um, Tractor Supply nor MSP Properties of Ohio would have would not have any issues with implementing them so long as they are feasible, as Sarah mentioned. Okay. Um, with the parking spots that I, I mentioned, and, and again, we sometimes will approve something and defer for staff final approval. Um, 
is page 41. Do you have that slide or one of those slides with the fire truck? 44. Number 44. Do you have that on the slide deck, Mr. Moore? Did you get the slides up on the projector for this one? There we go. Um, I don't believe we actually have the fire turning template in the slide okay. show. So I can, I just can the would it would it be a So all in all, I, th I think the general flow is, is pretty good. Um, I, <clears throat> I would be very interested in, uh, just one of our former commission members was a firefighter, so he ingrained a lot of things in us over the years. Um, and Mr. Perry's working on getting that. Uh, it, it was the fire uh, truck access from Route 27. Uh, everything looked really good. I was just concerned about um, area that goes into the outdoor storage, the 16-foot fence area. Um, are you amicable, able to maybe move some of those spots and extend more of the uh, um, kind of loading do not park here area? Do you mind pointing out to me which <coughs> other spots would be? There we go. Yep. Run it a little bit as a wider turn, it'd probably be okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I know it's a, it's a 28 foot drive aisle, and uh, we're, we're moving a 65 foot trailer to a particular lease. Yeah, so I, I think we can make that work, but we can absolutely okay. revise it. And, and that would be something I would trust the four of you to figure out. <laughs> yep, it's a good catch, though. Thank you. I pull a cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, are there any other questions? I could, and I, this is just a little bit of an oddball question, which is I, I really appreciate the staff thinking about the thoroughfare plan and the potential improvement of Todd Road in the future on the assumption that that might be a quite a ways off, if ever. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I'm just trying to imagine, is there an interim, like, I, I just hate to see a piece of property sit there and basically unused for what could be decades. And if there's a I'm just trying to think if there's a way that a temporary use that it could be leased until such time that there would be some productive use gotten out of it. So if there was some usage that you could have that was accessory to this uh, without redesigning everything so that some productive use of that corner could be made under lease agreement on the assumption that if in 20 years we need to improve it, you know, I just, just I can imagine mowing it in perpetuity and it just here's a productive use of the land, and I want to see it reserved, but I don't necessarily need to see it untouched for the next. How about they're testing the farm equipment? Yeah, I'm just like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just, I'm just thinking out loud because I'm not sure how big that piece of property is that's at the corner there. It's not yeah, huge. It would be a sizable chunk, but I mean, we could, we could talk to the service department about um, utilizing it for maybe a native planting of some kind, uh, because I would hate to see it be an easement yeah. where we don't actually own it. Yeah. Because it's really hard to get that later. Or but I'm thinking more that, that they could lease it from the city for sure. the duration of their use. Possibly. Maybe there's no, but it could be the way Koenig is displaying farm equipment. I mean, I'm not, I'm not recommending that. I'm just. Right. What is a way to utilize it so it's just not. Something that would be ancillary to your maintenance business maintenance. In, in what would essentially be a leased easement. Do you see what I'm getting at? It's I see what you're saying. I, I would, I would like to ask you a question though, by the use, are you referring to something that's just aesthetically pleasing to the area or something that would actually be used by a pedestrian? No, I'm just thinking about a productive use if there were some aspect of your, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't want to derail us here. It's just, I'm, I'm appreciative that it's set aside. It's just if there were some non-permanent use that could be put either public or a leased private use yeah. adjacent to your business. So it's, 
anyway, it's just a prominent corner that's going to sit kind of mowed there for likely we decades. Could, we so. could get some ideas from the public, I'm sure. Yeah, or, or yeah, so yeah. anyway, it's, I mean, okay. Uh, so it would be deeded over to the city. If that would be our preference. Yeah, okay. I We'd absolutely be willing to work with whatever suggestions you have. I can also go back to Tractor Supply and see if there's any sort of proto new prototypical things they're having for outside use as well. Um, I'm not sure if there are, but I can definitely okay. ask. I didn't want to derail us with that question. I just well, was I, just I, it's good, good thought. I just want to say, yeah. uh, full disclosure, there's two weeks of wetlands in that area. Yeah. So it's actually... Mm. Okay. I, I was actually going to say I, that we actually don't want to keep that just because... Okay, that, uh, you answered my question. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Well, I was up there the other day, and I was like... There's cattails yeah. there, so yeah. like right. we could we could leave it alone. <laughs> well, I, think yeah. the, I think the cattails are probably created by the alteration to the land. Yeah, but it's twenty-seven. They're still <laughs> there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. This is the whole process I went through. Uh, the thoroughfare the thoroughfare plan makes no sense to me here at all. Um, but I didn't think you had to adjust much to accommodate it because it didn't seem like usable area. Yeah. Yep, that is true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'd be willing to do it, but it's um it's it's your call. Questions. So, with a conditional use, just before they sit down, and then we're like, "Wait, we have a question." Uh, we'll go over the the. I almost said design standards. I meant decision standards. Um, but um, while the applicant is up here on pages, gosh, it would start in the staff report on page six, and then pretty much through fourteen. Um, and, and to clarify, uh, with the conditions and you know the, the height of the fence, vacating, uh, deferred sidewalks, uh, everything that Mr. Moore proposed is is um, amicable to your team. Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or any epiphanies or changes? Thought? I mean, we're not voting on it, but any changes that they would like to ask the applicant before we close the session? This is an easy, uh, uh, you know, Q and A for you both. Yeah, we'd love to have Jack. He's such a great job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for your time. All right. Thank you. And with that, I will entertain uh, comments from the public. So, if anybody here would like to make a comment based on this agenda item, uh, please come up to the podium, and we will allot you a whopping 180 seconds. For the record, not a soul is moving, so we will uh, move on from that portion. I will gladly accept the motion from a commissioner to close the public session. So moved. Mr. Bracken with the motion. Second. Second. Oh. You can pick. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? All right, we are in commission session. So, Arbuckle, do you have anything uh, burning or? That's your dial. Okay. I always look this way, so that's I'm waiting to get poked. Well, I mean, one of the things I want to just say is that I mean, I think we we take a critical eye to these things because I think it's good that we do. But often we're critical, and then nothing happens of it, you know. So this is I'm appreciative that someone is looking to develop um, uh, here, you know, and I'm. I'm optimistic it would be developed. I feel like the use is like aside from being technically appropriate, I feel like is 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 also appropriate for this context. And so I'm I'm happy someone's looking to maybe make this investment. Um, I I feel like we could be. I mean, we could take a hard look at some. I think the issues about the outdoor storage that you raise could very well, in a different context, be like really good conditional use conversations, which is like what's going to be stored out. Um, because I think it's likely not going to be nothing. Um, and if this were a different context in town, I might take a harder look at it. But given your location and context with Gilman across the way and Walmart and Koenig storing combines immediately adjacent, I think such a, I think this is an appropriate use. And so I just I want to thank the applicant for 
you know, it seems like this evolved over time, and for being am uh, amicable or, you know, amenable, I want to thank Mr. Moore for a thorough, like, we have good code, and Mr. Moore did a really thorough analysis, and so it's, the job seems pretty easy to me. Mr. Chair Rosenberg? You haven't spoke to me, so I have nothing to talk. I mean, my only opinion is that this is a great piece of land for such a great business for this community, so I'm really supportive. I agree. Oh, you want to go? Yeah, <laughs> I was uh, really supportive. Um, yeah, I think, you know, in regard to this issue of the displays, um, I, I just feel per personally that it's kind of a non issue because I feel like we are in a different part of town where, where people are buying stuff and looking at it, and it's this is sympathetic to the surroundings. So I'm all for it, and I think it's a good proposal. Um, agree with everything that's been said. I will say, um, to the point of aesthetics, that that, that is a, a fairly major, um, you know, traveling on the pike going north. Um, most of what you'll see is a sort of a 16-foot fence, and so I would say, especially maybe in terms of the landscaping, to try and focus on you know de more dense trees in that part, and um, you know any kind of landscape screening that might, um, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, help maybe soften some of that edge and, and some of the view towards the 16-foot fence. I think um, I, just, just to follow on with that, I think that we've done that in the past in which there's kind of a set, a ratio for the number of trees, but the placement mm -hmm. is kind of up to discretion. And in certain circumstances, we've said, hey, you have to do X number of trees. Could you please concentrate them on this portion of the site? And I think this is a great example where that might be really, you know, relevant. All right. Um, my <coughs> my only comments um, on this are um, funny enough with the bike rack. I remember Mr. Dana when this was proposed as a storage facility. Uh, we were talking about people riding their bike to get stuff out of their storage. That was kind of uh, interesting. I, I saw the number of bike racks you put in, and at first I was kind of chuckling to that conversation, but then I thought about it. It is very feasible as we densify this intersection. I mean, right there will be three places you can buy flowers or pick up a bag of this or a bag of that and s or, you know, nuts and bolts, like smaller things. So I actually, it was one of those things where I was, I was almost going to propose easing it, and then I was like, wait, there's a lot of land. It's eight bike racks, and, you know, we're, it's going to be adjacent. So I could see, you know, our, our paths and thoroughfares are, are becoming more prominent. So I could see somebody coming back from Houston Wood and swinging by and picking up, you know, something. So um, I appreciate the, um, the design on those kind of things. Um, I, so I'm going to, these are no longer my comments, but I just want to go over the decision criteria real quick and then make sure that we've captured everything in staff recommendations. Um, so I'm not going to read them. I want to go over them. Uh, but the, uh, I always forget, is it 14 decision standards? I don't know my alphabet. I think that is. They're numbered. I think it's 14. Okay. Ending at end. So uh, decision criteria, um, I, I read through those and personally I didn't, nothing jumped out at me. Is everyone uh, agreeable that uh, page 10 through 12, uh, decision criteria A through N, that they've all been met and or addressed um, by staff, the applicant, our law department, the fire chief? thing I wanted to make sure I clarify before I accept the motion on that. Mr. Moore, um, or, uh, the location of the trash receptacle. I quickly didn't see that in the uh, staff recommendations. I, I most it likely should be, I think it's condition number 10. Is the ah, dumpster enclosure okay. being relocated? Yes. There was enclosure. Okay. That's, that's where I missed it. Okay. It, that's my only concern. So, unless anybody has any additions, changes, corrections, uh, I will accept the motion to 
um, approve this. Well, I'll accept that well, motion. A motion to accept Thank staff you. recommendations, both in terms of the, the, the decision standards and the recommended conditions. All right, perfect. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Bracken with a second. I'll start with Mix Rosenberg. Yes. Ms. Webster. Yes. Mr. Bracken. Yes. Mr. Arbuckle. Yes. Mr. Prithrich. Yes. Mr. Crude. Yes. And Mr. Watt. Yes. All right. Motion passes. Uh, thank you very much uh, for everybody uh, putting the work into this. Um, moving on, we have PC 2024-03. So that was the motion. Do we still need to approve that or make a recommendation? Or are we good? Was that the, that was okay? I'm sorry. I, I was thought that was going to be a two-part step. Okay, thank you. Oh, we, I think the wording we used was sufficient for for it all. Okay. Yep. Um, so PC 2024-03 text amendment text ugh, zoning text amendment to require primary residence for transient guest lodging. The applicant is Mr. Perry, and after the uh, double stars, it says recommendation to table. So, seeing as that is a preemptive request on the part of staff, unless anyone's dying to discuss this tonight, I will gladly accept the motion to table it. Now, once the motion is made, is there any conversation about that once it's done? There's, okay. There's no discussion on table motion. Yeah. Wow, what a great thing that we're going to talk about. Really important thing that we're going to talk about next next month, I request that we table this. <laughs> I was like, where are you going with that? <laughs> Vice Chair Rosenberg with the motion. We do really I, need to do this important thing. Do I, gonna, <laughs> I was being political. I agree with you. <laughs> well, I'm going to do the same thing that Mix Rosenberg has said, which is I don't think we need to wait for additional analysis on this before moving forward, but I'll second her motion. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Uh, <laughs> All those in favor of tabling this? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Seeing none, the motion is tabled. All right. It's not on the agenda. It does refer to the previous. Uh, the address, I know we saw that it was incorrect. It goes back and forth the entire packet, so hopefully uh, nothing gets formally they're, registered they're, under they're the wrong they're address. They're LLC, the wrong, yeah. the wrong okay. name. So. <laughs> Just checking. Scotch card doesn't have a U. But all right, with that, uh, I will gleefully accept a motion to adjourn. I moved. Dr. Bracken. Brethridge, Mr. Bracken, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Seeing none, we are adjourned.